My name is Eric Weider. I'm a Data Integration Practice Lead for Checkpoint Consulting. I've spent the last 10 plus years designing, developing, and implementing data integration solutions for Hyperion projects. This specific area has been around ETL, so the HAL, DIM, ODI routines, uh, most recently doing extensive master data work. The agenda slash overview for this presentation is as follows. We're going to break it into three sections. Section one is going to talk about the DRM EPMA value proposition, specifically master data processing in the EPM environment and our solution. Section two, we're going to get a little bit more technical details, talk about the classic verse uh, DRM EPMA approach. Section three, we're going to do a live demo of adding an account to the environment and let it populate across. So the specific problem we're addressing in this presentation is master data, also known as, as metadata in the Hyperion space. This includes any of the application hierarchies within HFM planning or S-space. So that's your chart of accounts, entity structures, product customers, um, statistical accounts, things of that nature. Listed some common quotes that you would hear in during Hyperion implementations, myself writing the code to update master data on a monthly basis. Um, it's often underestimated the amount of time it takes to synchronize and maintain those monthly uh, and maintain them across applications and from the source GL. The benefits achieved. Uh, at a high level, this presentation is meant to talk about the enhancement of the master data process across the EPM environment. That's sourcing it, loading it, maintaining it, and synchronizing it uh, monthly um, or daily, weekly, or whatever your process is. We're achieving this by leveraging tools in the EPM stack without any customization. So we are leveraging DRM, and the data relationship management is a master data tool, and then we're leveraging EPMA, which is a feature in workspace. It's configurable at runtime. There's no additional uh, licensing costs there. So in the concepts we're going to discuss in this presentation are going to provide the following benefits. We're going to provide a consistent deployment of hierarchies across the EPM landscape. So we're going to create a pattern, something that is scalable for uh, future growth. And then what we're also going to do is lower the total cost of ownership and reduce complexity. So we're streamlining the monthly master data process. I think from this demonstration and the data flows, you'll see that we have extremely um, made this more efficient and reduced the number of heads and the time and cost it takes to uh, update master data monthly. We're going to provide transparency into master data rules uh, using DRN. And then we're going to automate that process for seamless processing. And at the same time, we by leveraging this model, we're creating a single point of maintenance. I have on the screen here a data flow diagram depicting a classic approach for loading master data. In this approach, an ERP administrator will log into uh, ERP, update their chart of accounts, products, customers, entities, things of that nature. After those are updated, a synchronization process needs to happen where they get pushed to your deployed HFM planning and S-base applications. When those are complete, your administrators for each of those applications log in, validate that everything processed the way it was supposed to. They check the properties and they add additional things like statistical accounts that don't exist in the ERP. Uh, this process is usually handled through uh, an, ER, an ETL routine, whether it be HAL, Informatica, or ODI. Those, that process connects with the ERP, extracts, puts the data into parent-child format, applies all the security, uh, properties for HFM and other properties for across the landscape and then at the same time attributes and then connects with each of the applications and updates them. This process here we're going to focus entirely on something when we do the demo on the account and we're going to simulate an account being added across four applications. The thing to take note of here when we do the demo and what you see in the, in the next few slides is something like account that is in all four applications in order to build that account dimension we would have to have four separate ETL routines that would connect with the ERP and load the data to HFM planning in the two S-based apps and in the future if you added another application you would require another ETL routine to load that same account across another application so you see as, as, as you, your system grows your landscape grows you would continue to add more ETL routines the classic approach issues, I'm just going to name and talk about a few of them here really quick. Uh, we have complex data architecture, as you can tell by that last process. Just talking about all the ETL routines that are out there. Um, the ETL routines lead into something we'll call black box logic, which means administrators on the HFM planning and S-based side really don't know how, how that data is being created or massaged into a parent-child hierarchy. Uh, the properties that are being assigned, how we're adding attributes and things of that nature because it's all in the HELS, ODI, or DIN code. In order to understand that, someone would have to ask a developer to go in and, and give me the specific rule of how you're adding security classes for HFM 
um, how are we adding the default parent for HFM or how are we adding attributes for an SBA's planning application. The process that we're deploying Checkpoint over the last few years now is, is as follows. We have, we're leveraging DRM and EPMA and DRM is as, acting as a midstream master data management tool. So it is a, doing two things. It's absorbing master data from the ERP in, in a DRM flat file format. DRM absorbs that, applies the changes to the hierarchies in DRM, and at the same time, administrators for HFM planning and SBASE can log on to DRM through security, validate those changes, uh, view how the logic was applied to add things like security, classes for HFM, default parent um, attributes, and at the same time can update and add statistical accounts all through security. We can set that up so that it depends on what, what owner owns what can do what. Then we update the applications through HFM planning and SBASE before. We do this entirely different than what we did in the classic approach. We no longer use any ETL, so no HAL, ODI, or DIN. What we're using is DRM exports to export the data out of DRM, and we're leveraging EPMA in this model. And we're leveraging, with EPMA comes a set of interface tables, which can consume exports from DRM. So there's a direct point-to-point -point connection between DRM and the interface tables. So in this example, account. And, and within the shared library and application libraries, the, the applications that are created, we are synchronizing the master data updates. So thing to take away here and to note is that we have an account dimension. We'll focus on that because that will be part of the demo. Account dimension update made in DRM. Again, point to point is pushed from DRM into the interface tables, into the shared library. Because in this example, remember we said account is used the same across all four applications. We make an update in one spot in the shared library, and that is pushed to all four applications. Just a few things I want to talk about on the architecture, the benefits that we see here. It's a simplistic data architecture. As you can tell from the classic approach to this, we remove all that ETL, all that HAL, ODI, and DIN logic. No longer using that. We are just doing exports from DRM. And this, what this does is it reduces that black box logic we talked about because we're leveraging DRM and you have insight into the rules that are being applied for loading master data. And then the other concept I want to take away here is the shared dimension that we're leveraging in DRM, or I'm sorry, in EPMA, and that, that concept of if that dimension is being used in multiple applications, you can load use the shared library instead of the application library and make an update to one spot and you can propagate those changes across all four applications, whether it be at the same time push them or at different times in the process. What I'm brought up back again is a data flow diagram and what we're just focusing everything in reservoir we're going to do in the demo uh, in the live uh, environment that we have. We're going to make we're going to simulate making a change in DRM, a statistical account we're at. We're going to show a file that will simulate a file coming from an ERP. We're going to push that and synchronize an account, one two account changes across two applications. In this case, we're going to show HFM and planning. I'm going to log into our checkpoint lab. We're going to log into DRM. I'm going to pull up a screen for DRM and for Workspace. And we're going to log into an HFM. We're going to look at the HFM application first. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the, uh, a grid and we're going to look at the account dimension. We're going to look at a statistical parent and we're going to also look at the net income parent. I'm going to open up a planning application at the same time. We're going to look at the same areas of the hierarchy, statistical parent, and we're going to look under net income. And these hierarchies between HFM and planning are exactly the same. 
Next I'm going to log into DRM. Quickly going to open up the account dimension. I'm going to do two things in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a statistical account so that this just briefly show you that the account that we're looking at in DRM is the same hierarchy that we saw in the applications. So this is the same hierarchy that's deployed in HFM, same hierarchy deployed in the planning application. I'm going to go ahead and simulate a administrator adding a statistical account. that member. That member has been added and what we're also going to show is I'm going to show under the file that we simulate coming in from the GL. We have a directory structure out here. We're going to show we have a file called demo hierarchy and for the purposes of this, this is we're just adding one account with a simulating comer from the GL. In this example, we're going to add A11111 to the net income parent. We're going to give it a description of new tax account automatic GL feed. So this is to simulate that file coming from the GL system. We have a batch process that runs to execute and move all this data at one time. This would be something set up similar in an environment. What's occurring here is there are two batch clients running. The first batch client is DRM. DRM is processing the exports of the account dimension from DRM. It's actually first pulling in the account dimension file, applying that change, adding that A11 account to the net income parent in DRM, and then is executing exports out of DRM to the interface tables, which we discussed. And then the interface tables are being imported through an import profile into EPMA shared library for that account and then, then the last step is it's being pushed to the application HFM and to the planning application. The process has completed. I'm going to log quickly back into both DRM and to EPMA. I'm going to open up DRM to show that our account, the A111, was added properly. In DRM, our new account that we added that came from the file, we already know that we added the, the, the manual account for A222. What we're going to do quickly is log back into HFM and then log back into planning to show that that account, the two separate accounts, the one from the file and the manual account added were added properly to HFM and planning. In HFM, there's the A11 account that was added from the file to parent of net income and our 222 account. At the same time, we're going to take a look over at the planning application. Same, same scenario, A11 was added from the file and A22, so in that process we added to one location and let it populate to both. So for many of our clients we have seen a significant reduction in processing time and the number of resources to maintain master data and synchronize monthly. These clients are also very excited about the level of governance and control and flexibility. If you have any, would you like more information on this, you can contact uh, myself at uh, the, the checkpoint info at checkpointllc.com email or our website at www.checkpointllc.com.